I'll give you examples. The late Mirza Ash-Shirazi Rahmatullah Alayh. That we've all heard his story probably, I'll, I'll say it for you, but we probably most of you have heard of it. But I'm going to say this because of another story. How he was a marja of his time. Of course, in that time, you didn't have an Islamic revolution or no, no but even back then, when was he born? I think it was 1240 AH. Right now we're in 1436. That's almost 200 years ago. He comes out, he hears that there has been a concession has been given to the British. Iran, the Qajar dynasty has given a concession of the tobacco industry to the British. For 50 years the British can monopolize the tobacco industry. And back then tobacco was big and huge they say. Everybody did it. They didn't know it was bad, as bad back then than they, than they do now. Although now that we also know still it doesn't really matter sometimes. To the extent that people would break their fasts with this, they say. So now you have a marja. Mirza Ash-Shirazi. After the great, great, great Murtada al-Ansari, he is the marja of the Shia world. And not only the Shia world, Ahlul Sunnah come to him. So O marja, you want to keep this status of yours? Stick with your wajib and haram and najasa and tahara. And khums and so on. No. People uprise because this, this, uh, mon this monopoly that, has been, that, that is being done by the British, it has affected thousands of lives. People's livelihoods are compromised. Word reaches him in Samarra he was in. He tried to go to even Medina to be there. He tried to go to Mashhad, I think. Different places he tried to go to have his marja'iyah. He ended up in Samarra. Word reaches him in Samarra, Iraq, not Iran, Iraq. What did he do? Two lines, very simple. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. From today onwards, any consumption and usage of tobacco and tutun is equal to fighting the imam of the time. Assalamu alaikum. That's all. He destroyed the industry. But you're a marja. A marja. What does a marja do? A marja sits home and wajib haram, right? No, sometimes when there's a great danger, the ulama have a wadifa to do application of, the, of, of those rules and rulings for the people. Because sometimes the people can't. That's what ulama are for. The great Mirza Shirazi, he destroyed everything. What did they do? They nullified that concession. And it was very bad on the report card of the king of the time of Iran. Give, uh, very bad for him. But he didn't take his fatwa back either. He said, I'm not going to take it back. I'm going to wait to make sure. Look at this alam. He says, I'm going to wait to make sure that they're not going to give it back. So like 10, 20 days later, he, take, he says, okay, from this day forward, you can start consuming again. We're sure that it's been taken out of their hands. That simple. And some say, I haven't really looked into this, but some say that they saw him once crying, the great Mirza Shirazi. He said, why are you crying? He said, now the people know, the enemies know the power of marja'iyah. And how what a, what a real what an alim can really do. They're not they're not they're not going to fight the same the same fight again that they had 150 100 years ago. What are they going to do? They're going to say we're going to separate the people from marajaya. You can't fight marajaya. We tried before, it didn't work. They're they're smart. They're smart. We're going to divide. What's the best tool to divide the people from marajaya? It's jahl. Is putting the measuring stick, taking it from here, putting it somewhere else, and making something else the measuring stick of haqq and batil. Now what's interesting is, this same Al-Mirza Al-Shirazi, they say his eldest son once was killed. Who killed him? A Sunni killed him. Look at the Basira. Look at the Basira. 
they came to the Mirza. They said, your son has been killed. He had a grudge or what, what, what it was, I don't know. Some people came, some people came, I'm going to underline, some people came to the Mirza. They said, we want to avenge the death of your son. How dare they? The oldest son of our Marja? How dare you? I will spill the blood of that who, of he whom uh, disrespects my Marja, let alone kills the eldest son of my Marja? What did he say in response? This is what an alim is for. An alim is to be able to pinpoint where things are going wrong. An alim like this has spent 60, 70 years of his life in the culture and heritage of Ahlul Bayt. He breathes Ahlul Bayt. It's like when you, if someone comes to you and says, yeah, you know what, your mom said, I want to kill my son. You say, I know my mom, I've been with her all my life. When she says that, she means something else. They're like, no, no, she's going to kill you. You say, but I know what she means. I'm part of her. I've grown up with her. An alam like this, when something happens, he says, I know this is what's supposed to be done here. It's no joke, brothers and sisters. All your life you've breathed Ahlul Bayt, you can easily pinpoint, but others can't. And that's what the alam is for. What did he say in response to these certain people that some say there was an agenda behind it? That they had come to the Mirza. He says, I want you to listen carefully. You have no right to interfere in any affair of the Muslims. But this is something very personal. Your son has been killed. The son of the leader of the Shia has been killed by a Sunni. It's not a matter of the it's not an affair of the Muslims. But he, this is how he words it because he has basira. You gain basira through what? Ilm and amal. He has both. Ilm and amal equals basira. You have no right to interfere in any affair of the Muslims and Muslim lands. Dang, he's even generalizing more. The Muslim lands. He's, he, can, he, he can go on. What has happened is a simple incident that has taken place between two brothers. Subhanallah. This is the culture and heritage of Ahlul Bayt. He's breathing Ahlul Bayt. Right there, they're trying to get Sunni Shia against each other. Very simply, he sees it and he ends it there. He ends it there. This is what an alam does. It's not just wajib and haram, najis and tahir and so on and so forth. No, there's a lot more to it. 